beautiful people. Welcome back to another episode of Fano Spotlights. I am your host for the evening, representing Fano Spotlights' flagship podcast, Dragon Ball Full Life, Mr. Matthew Porter. And I had the pleasure of watching and reviewing The School for Good and Evil, where as of this recording is now on Netflix for your viewing pleasure. Uh, thematically, I want you to think Harry Potter meets Descendants. So if I have any parents watching this that have uh, children, you've probably seen that movie a thousand times. So it definitely uh, caters to them. But it is uh, fantastical enough within uh, that fantasy genre that it'll definitely uh, give you that fix while we wait for Game of Thrones to come back in 20 whenever it gets back. So our movie is about two protagonists. We have Agatha whose family is a family of healers, but because of the time period that the movie takes place, which is like that uh, standard medieval Puritan, old school uh, era, you know, with people that dealt with medicine back then, they're viewed as witches. So because Agatha and her family are viewed as witches, they're the outcasts. You know, they're not really allowed into town. They're not welcome anytime that they are there. You know, their stones are thrown at them. They're not allowed to like shop in the markets and whatnot, what have you. So they are very uh, self-contained. Uh, a lot of uh, actors' personality is being independent, you know, doing things yourself, like beating to the beat of your own drum and not really caring what people think about you, which plays a big part in her character development. Now, Agatha does have one friend, one best friend, one true best friend, who is our second protagonist, and her name is Sophie. Now, Sophie, uh, just in terms of aesthetics, is uh, pretty much the exact opposite of Agatha. She you knows she wears a lot of gowns. Uh, she she even wears like a, a twig crown and is affectionately referred to as Princess Sophie. Now, the thing about Sophie is uh, her mother used to read fairy tale stories to her every night when she was a little girl. And even after her mom passed away, she kind of continued that trend on for herself. Now, being filled with all these uh, this imagery of, you know, princesses and princes and you know saving the realm and you know and being royalty and having subjects and living in a beautiful castle sophie believes that the life that she's living isn't what it's supposed to be she believes that she is bigger than her circumstances and she will do any and everything to change her stars to change her destiny to become the princess that she always knew that she would be i want much more than this provincial now, the designation of these two girls is very important to how the story progresses. So keep in mind, Agatha Witch, Sophie Princess. Now, again, back to Sophie being uh, such an avid reader, she clearly spends a lot of time in the library. One faithful trip to said library with Agatha, the librarian actually says to her, you know, like these stories that you read all the time, has anyone ever told you that they're actually about real people? Not only are they about real people, but they also uh, are people who went to a school that trained them and taught them to be these heroes and these princes and princesses that lived uh, lives of grandeur that you that you fall in love with so much. And uh, in that instance, Sophie's made up her mind. She said, that's my ticket out. This is how I change my destiny. This is how I become the princess that I always become. So Sophie devises a plan to get accepted into the school. Agatha kind of begrudgingly goes along with her. Now, what this movie does really well is highlight the fact of everything is in black and white not everybody is all good not everybody is all evil now the end of the movie definitely does leave openings for a sequel they kind of showed their hand that they want to make this kind of be like their next franchise i don't necessarily agree if that's the best idea because the movie uh itself it's kind of very surface level superficial. It's, it's a very prototypical standard fantasy movie that we've seen a thousand times. But like I said, the, the acting is good. The cast is great. The two leads are amazing. We got uh, vet actors like Charlize, Charlize Theron, Lawrence Fishburne, Kerry Washington. The budget was there, too. Like the, the, the effects look great. It's just like I said, the story, if you've seen The Descendants or Harry Potter or anything, it's very similar to that. But again, where it does come into play that they do do very well is giving you that theme that you know you choose who you are you're not who anybody or what society says you are and they don't really throw it in your face it's very subtle uh final rating if i had to do seven uh, i'm sorry if i had to give it out of 10 kind of <laughs> showed my hand there i would give it a seven out of ten uh, like I said, but I'm not their target audience. So maybe that's why my score is what it is. It's clearly made for young adults, but they do tackle enough of a mature ish content that, like I said, if a young adults watching it with their parent, their parent would like, oh, OK, I like that. So seven out of ten, I would recommend it. 
it is on netflix it is very good um and that's pretty much all there is that like i said i didn't want to give any spoilers so there are some twists some turns some surprises some scares friends become enemies enemies become friends but we all become better people for it at the end of the day <laughs> i will see you next time there's something to review and always remember follow that fandom bow